Hello there, my name is Jordan Leroy Hansen, also known as LeDev, and I'm here to provide my deck tech for the deck that I played yesterday called Everybody Walk the Dinosaur. Now, this is a teamer mid-range deck that I've been toying with because I kind of thought it would be funny to play with. Anyway, the main premise of the deck is using the card that we were toying around with, which is Rhythm of the Wild, which, for people who don't know, it's a free cost enchantment that costs one red and a green that says... Creature spells you control can't be countered. A K mates counter spell decks not very happy when this card's out on play. And non-token creatures you control have Riot, which Riot is a mechanic that came from Ravnica Allegiances. Essentially, creatures who have Riot, when they enter the battlefield, they can have a choice of what they enter with. They can either enter with a plus one, plus one counter, making them bigger, or enter in with haste, which makes them, well, faster, obviously. And Riot can stack, so if a creature had like two Riot on it, it can both enter in with a plus one, plus one counter, and with haste. Knowing that Riot can stack, this deck kind of revolves around that teeny little interesting mechanic. First off, in our one drops, we have Lairar Elves, which helps us to get a turn to Rhythm of the Wild, which is nice. We also have, as our two drops, Merfolk Branchwalkers, which are just the standard two drops at the moment if you're playing a green deck whatsoever. Just the factor that it's a 2-mana two 2-1 two is fine, that draws you a land, that's fine. Or it can just be a 2-mana free 2, which helps you dig into your deck, which is great. It's pretty much the epiphany 2-drop if you're playing green. We also have Simic Ascendancy in here as a 2-drop. Now, it kind of seems weird to have this in here, especially since our main gimmick is Rhythm of the Wild, but this card actually synergizes ridiculously well with our Merfolk Branch Walker, and our Jade Light Rangers, which we're going to get to, and also the other card we're going to get to. So the fact that we can use this as an alternate winning condition, just in case if we're going against a dirtily controlled deck, is nothing to sneeze at. Plus, worst case scenario, you can just use the free mana mana sync ability to make your creatures bigger, which could help you be overall aggressive. Honestly, this is only as a one of just as for testing purposes, but it's a good card for the deck. It's not... You can definitely replace it for another card if you want to, but I do like it in the deck as just a way to counter control matchups. Next up, the $40 card of the set, or $35 or whatever the price is at the moment, Hydroid Crisis. We have it as a free of, and it's just a really, really good card. The fact is, whenever you cast a spell, you gain half its life and draw half its cards, round down on each time, and it has Flying and Trample and it enters the battlefield with its plus one, plus one counters. Simply put, this is a card that's just great early game and great late game. An amazing mid-range kind of like scenario. For example, if you have to, it's not the end of the world to have Etz 2 gain a life and draw a card and have a 2-2 flying trample. Would you want it better? Yes, but it's not the end of the world. And then just that's the least it can be good as. And then it just gets better later and later in the game. And even just having this at 4, making it a 4-4 flying trample... Synergize is ridiculously well with our deck, and the fact that we have Rhythm of the Wild to put an additional counter on it or make it have haste so it can swing in the turn and summon is nothing to sneeze at. Obviously, people have been seeing this card played everywhere. We know it's a good card. It's just a really good card. And if you pull it, have fun playing with it. If you want to go out and try to get it, well, you're paying the piper on that one because... I would say wait a few more weeks because the price will probably go down a teeny little bit bit rather than the ridiculous like thirty to forty dollars because hopefully more packs will be open. But if you need to pay the typer for say a standard tournament, well you're paying the piper. Next up in our free drop range, which is a good card, Jade Right Ranger. Now this is the if Murfolk Branchwalker in green is the Epiphany two drop for green decks, Jade Light Ranger is the Epiphany three drop because it just does twice as good as what Merfolk Branchwalker does. It essentially explores twice, so having a free mana 2-1 that draws two lands, yeah, that's kind of the worst option, but having a, a free mana free 2 that essentially draws a land and then gets a counter on itself and digs into your deck, that's fine. And even Jade Light Ranger just being a 4 free for free mana, which is absurd, and being able to dig into your deck, it's a really good ability, synergizes as well as with Murfolk Grand Walk with Wit in the Wild, we can put an additional counter on it, or make it have haste if we want an aggressive 4 free, or whatever stats it's at. Also, the other enchantment I decided to put in here is Hedonis Climb. 
honestly, just with how many early game counter interactions we have, putting counters on our stuff, this is kind of a no-brainer in the deck. Especially since it could flip into the Hadana Temple, which essentially makes it where the creature will gain flying and plus S plus S, where X equals to its power. We can use it as a way to, as an alternative finisher, to try to essentially make our mid-range creatures get it swing in for a significant amount of damage. And it's relatively easy to flip, since most of our creatures will have counters that are early game. But obviously, good card for the deck, and the factor that even if we don't flip it, just the factor that it makes our creatures bigger is nice. We have it as a 2 up. Next is Gruel Spellbreaker, which we have as a 4 of. Obviously, great deck against white control decks that run like Settle the Wreckage and such. The fact that it gives yourself hex proof. It's also very good against burn matchups as well, since, you know, most opponents like to play their shock and lightning strikes at the end of your turn if they're going to. So the fact that the force them to be a lot more slower with the burn spells is nice. Plus, the factor is, it could either just be a free mana free free with haste, which is nice, and it could just be a free mana 4 4, which could be used as a blocker with hex proof on your turn, which is nice. Oh, and also the fact that it stacks with Rhythm of the Wild is nice, because then it's like you can have it with haste and a counter and such, or even more counters. Vice versa, vice versa. We also have here as a 2 of Domri Chaos Brainer. This one is just a powerful planeswalker for these type of deck archetypes. Essentially, it's plus one has it where we can get an additional piece of mana to try to get our bigger creatures out earlier and give it Riot, which is nice. Minus three is fine. It helps us dig into our deck and get more creatures to fill up our hand. And even the minus eight, if we get to it, it's kind of hard to get to it in competitive magic or in at least 1v1 rank magic. But if it does it, we pretty much undercept some very fringe circumstances win the game. Another card that's good for the deck, if we don't have our Rhythm of the Wilds out, but to give our late game creatures with haste, we have Red Sword Alpha. Red Sword Alpha is a 5 mana, free red and green, for a Dinosaur 4-4, with other dinosaur creatures you control have haste. When Red Sword Alpha enters the battlefield, you create a free free green dinosaur creature token with trample and haste, keep that in mind, as long as this is out on the battlefield. And obviously, this synergizes with Rhythm of the Wild because we can either give Red Sword Alpha haste or make it bigger. And then just essentially try to swing in for significant points of damage uh, early game. Now, you might also wonder why we have the Dinosaur have haste kind of synergy in here. Since, as most people notice, most of our early game is not really dinosaur centric. Well, honestly, it's for two reasons. First reason is because, well, getting the additional token does help us with board presence. Even though the token doesn't synergize with Rhythm of the Wild, just having that additional aggressive unit is very nice. Plus, it actually mostly, this is more a card to have us synergize with late game. Because as you notice, with our late game creatures, they are very dinosaur centric. We have two Carnage Tyrants, which obviously one of the better dinosaurs in the standard format. The fact that it can't be countered and has Trample and Hex Proof. Synergize ridiculously well with Rhythm of the Wild, getting a counter or just giving it haste to get Sween in for a significant chunk of damage is nothing to sneeze at. We have that as a 2 of. We also have a Tali Primal Storm, mostly in there, it's just kind of a fun card to get all the Elder Dinosaurs in there. But it's also nice when it has haste, you can steal a spell from your opponent, that could be very powerful. We also have Nezahal, Primal Tide in the deck, mostly just to go through the cycle of Elder Dinosaurs just for the funsies, but obviously really good card against control matchups and such, so keep that in mind. And then the last Elder Dinosaur in our colors we have is Galta, Primal Hunger. Obviously, since we have a lot of early game ways to buff all creatures up and make them significantly high attack, Galta can sometimes come out for relatively cheap. And if it has, like, Rhythm of the Wild out, give it haste, or even Red Star Alpha to give it haste, that can sometimes be used overall as a game finisher. And that is the deck itself. The lands we have is we have a four of breeding pools, two forests, four hinterland harbors, one island, two mountains, four rootbound crags, two steam vents, four stomping grounds, and two sulfur falls. Now, I hope this deck idea could give people some inspirations to kind of make their own variation of this deck, because this archetype can expand into, like, different variations of aggressive mid-range that I think people are going to give a shot at. Overall, though, I hope you and guys enjoy, or gals and everybody else, enjoy the deck tech. You all have a lovely day. This is Lev Dev, signing out.